quite a lot of those photos, I remember them, are from the fourth series. Mm. Um, I mean, the first series, we rehearsed at the Working Men's Club in, in Acton. Oh, yes. And that's where all the first photographs mm. were taken. And I think we rehearsed there for the second and third series. I think we went to the BBC custom-built rehearsal rooms at Acton. Oh, they're, right. they're still there. Yeah. And I think that that's where that must have been taken. Yes, that Because it looks sense. a bit big for a BBC office, so I <laughs> imagine it might be there. Yes, we no. did a lot of rehearsals and, and working at Terry's place. Mm. Everyone came from a slightly different sort of angle on it. You know, John and Graham were slightly more sort of um, aggressive in, this, in a sense. Mm. Terry and I were the two sillier ones. Eric was brilliant on the verbal sketches, the music and all that. Yes. So everyone had something to contribute. Mm. And it, I think one of the most important aspects of fighting at that time was getting Terry Gilliam involved because he had, I mean, an animator, he was quite brilliant. And we'd worked with him before on Do Not Just Your Set. And he managed to bring to this group of sort of uh, disparate English comics a certain sort of American style which enabled us to put remains of sketches together. I don't think Carol gets enough credit, no. I mean, she, she was just so good at what she did. We were very, very lucky to have someone who, uh, say, sort of pinpointed the humour so well. Yeah. And she was able to do anything, Carol. There wasn't any, you know, she'd muck in and do whatever she wanted. Yeah. She had a great sense of fun, yeah. a terrific sense of humour, and connected with us very well. We, we all acknowledge her and, and, and how important she was. But I think it was just that she fitted so well into Python that yeah. nobody sort of, sort of thinks of, of, of saying that. <laughs> <laughs> That was a sketch about a sculptor in some northern city, oh. and he sculpted the mayor, and the mayor comes in. The mayor was played by Graham, I think. Sadly, Graham couldn't remember the words terribly well. And, but the point was, it was very funny that this bust, in which the nose was about two feet long, <laughs> And everyone was trying not to put, not to upset the artist, yes. you know. And uh, it was one of those, you know. I, I'm an artist. I yes. do what I want. You know, this is, what, this is how I see it. But his nose is two feet long. That doesn't matter to me. That is, that's the way I do it. That's my vision of what he is like. So it was a, quite an interesting idea, but it never got shown. We leapt at the chance uh, to bid for a bit of cross-dressing. And this was a kind of interesting thing about Python, that there were certain sort of caricature women that we had to play ourselves. And there were, then, there, then there were women women who Carol played very well. But a lot of people say, why didn't you have women playing Terry's mother and all that? Well, because Terry could play his mother better than anybody. That, that was the fourth series. Yeah. We had a sort of slightly lusher set then. Yeah. Uh, you look at the first series, in fact, there's a, an opening sketch in the first series, which I, I mean, I thought <laughs> this was the beginning, the end of it. It was yeah. only the first show. And it's where John and I have to share a moustache when oh, we're yes. playing the two people talking about the Anglo French Frenchman, Concord yeah. sheep. And uh, we have to, when you finish speaking, I'd take the moustache off, stick it on the other person who would then start speaking. And it just, the moustache kept falling off. It yeah. was completely hopeless. Yeah. We giggled, we had to do retakes, nobody knew what was going on. I thought, oh no, this, was, this, this series wasn't a good idea. But now it's very, very funny. When we did the O2 Arena shows, yeah. and, and I realised as we went on that when things went wrong, the audience absolutely loved it. Oh. So that was our... Yes, safety net. Absolutely. And indeed, Eric's moustache in a nudge nudge while we were on stage at the O2 Arena began to droop um, in one sketch. And there was just absolute roars yes. of laughter. Yes. So the next night, I think Eric sort of made sure it drooped a bit yes. purposefully. I think it's very important to keep you know, Terry in the picture. Yeah. He's still around, you know. He's not disappeared. Uh, and apart from the, the wonderful work he left behind, the work he's done, he's also still, you know, so I still go and see him and mm. there's still a bit of Terry there, you know, a sparkle in the eye. He, he's can't, he, he can't communicate, that's the problem, which is so ironic for someone who loved words and, and debate and jokes and opinions and ideas, you know. He's, all that's completely dried up now and he can say very little. So, uh, um, but I mean, I go and see him, he looks he's fairly robust, mm. but it is... It, you know, a dementia like that doesn't doesn't suddenly stop or get better. Of course. So I think it's something that will take its course. Mm. But, I mean, there's enough of Terry there to make me feel very grateful in a way that I can still go and see him.